Hi, Lloyd here. Pat the podcast editor is enjoying a week in sunny Wales, so I'm going to do my best impression of him for you. In today's episode, Dan and Lloyd talk about teachers and whether everyone that offers training is really qualified to do so. So how can you how can you teach others when you haven't actually got to where yeah. they want to get to? Dan poses some difficult questions and asks, should you really be training other people? He had a failing business as a plumber and now he's got a hugely successful p- business teaching people how to be a plumber when he was a failed plumber. Can you see what's wrong with that? So what can you do to make sure you're being ethical as a trainer? But it's about managing expectations of what you've been there, done and got the t-shirt in terms of results and managing that rather than overselling and inflating what you can do. Right, let's get this show on the road. This is episode 71 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Those who can, do. Those who can't, teach, said George Barnard Shaw in his drama series written in 1903. Do you agree with that, Lloyd? Um, I'll tell you if I agree with that, but firstly, um, I just want to question you a bit. So who is George uh, Bernard Shaw, then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, have uh, you just found a quote from the internet and you don't even know who said I, it? He did, I did read a little bit into it and he did some drama series on TV. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know much okay. about it. <laughs> I, if we're talking about needing to be taught stuff, mm. uh, I just need to, today, I need to be taught how to be better at life. Why? Um, I so I, I'm trying to start some healthy habits, which is a positive thing. You're right. Great. So one of those, uh, I'm exercising more regularly, and I'm also trying to make myself eat breakfast because I find I skip breakfast, and then get crazily hungry lunchtime, just trying to eat everything I possibly see. Right. And so new routine this morning. Mm-hmm. Had some yogurt, some blueberries, and with some seeds all mixed, and it, I actually really enjoyed I'm it. Figure out what you've done to fuck this um, up. But because I don't know if you've ever had this changing my normal morning routine so i've just changed that one thing i just had breakfast mm. right um but because i've done that so firstly my uh uh how to say this politely my number two schedule has gone all out of whack right okay. so we're we're sitting down to record podcasts at work i feel like i need to go <laughs> right, normally okay. i just go once in the morning <laughs> yeah. and then 12 times throughout the day and it's fine <laughs> yeah. um, and also um just didn't put my contact lenses in so i'm already getting a headache trying to read anything <laughs> Right, interesting. So it's been a been a tough morning for me. Cool. I made one positive step and taken a lot of steps backwards and made my day harder. Thanks for sharing that. That's all right. Um, um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> into what you've actually asked me. Um, um, so, what, so yeah, I was going to say, tell me, you you're asking me this question. Yeah, I haven't answered. Okay, you. what what are your thoughts? So, um, so the whole thing is like, uh, do people who basically aren't good at something teach it because it's easier? That's what that kind of mm-hmm. quote's saying. Okay. Yeah. Now, I've I I feel like I and we have both sides of the coin here, experiencing both sides of the coin. Because I don't know if you remember Lloyd, but when we started Knowlton, previously called KBS Digital Marketing, I'd say at least fifty percent of what we did was training. Yeah. Yeah. Around yeah. that. Yeah, I would say so. Um, and even I think the last kind of proper training we did was in Dubai at the end of 2019. I went out and trained a load of marketers mm-hmm. so we've done that mm-hmm. and i'd say after 2019 we kind of have heavily shifted into actually delivery you know delivering marketing campaigns creating great content running ad campaigns for clients so we've done both mm-hmm. now my honest opinion uh and in uh, from doing both is that i personally think training is much easier than delivery because when it comes delivery, you mean like I doing, mean like doing, doing it. Yeah. When it comes to training, from my experience, if you're, you know, you you obviously have to get good at knowing how to train people and how to deliver training well. Yeah. There's all there's all the hard bits you have to get better at to be a good trainer. Yeah. And, that's and make it engaging. Yeah. And you know, make obviously. sure people are listening. That. But um, in terms of when it comes to them applying what you've learnt, mm. whether that's successful or not, is ultimately down to them. So you don't have really have responsibility whether what you've taught them is actually working or not. Because if it doesn't work, you can say, well, you didn't do it well enough. Yeah, the responsibility on you as a trainer, I guess, is to make sure the people you're training enjoy it and and 
feel that it's useful yes. at the point of delivery. Whereas, when delivering marketing support or marketing campaigns, doing, doing, there's nowhere to h run and hide. All well, not, not all the responsibility because you know clients need to provide you the information mm. they need and that and that play their part. But almost all of the responsibility is on you to get the results. So you can't the just say good with stuff. You. You're responsible for you know, doing it. The yeah. That's, yeah. Um, and we're going to tell some stories in this episode for things that have triggered us and why we think, well, and I'm going to say, share some things, why I think sometimes training is a bit is unethical. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, that's just my thoughts. I think, well, I think a lot of people will be surprised when you, so you've said training is unethical. I think people will be like, why the hell would training be unethical? What are they going on about? Um, I think... I think that's going to be people just won't get it until we go into it. But uh, uh, before we get into the thing of why we think a lot of the time when people are teaching and training is unethical and rubbish in general, um, to explain that, because this is a bit of a rant and could be seen as a bit of a negative episode, right? Which isn't isn't us. We're not very no. negative normally, are we? I just want to let you know, like the positive side of this so yeah we we are going to have a bit of a rant on on people that are teaching and training and that we believe are having a negative effect mm -hmm. but personally i think um for long-term success in business mm. um, i think you need to strive to be the best at something mm -hmm. and i think we're going to go into detail but some people are giving something a go sometimes for years sometimes for weeks sometimes for months and then thinking it will be easier if I try and teach someone this rather than carrying mm. on trying to be the best at it. And I think it's possible to get some short-term success from then training others. But I, I think to really be fulfilled mm. and provide the most value you can and potentially earn more as well, um, mm. if that's one of your goals, I think striving to be the best at something is always going to be a long-term positive, which is why... Yeah, I was going to say, what are you trying to get at? So I'm saying, like, <laughs> this is why this rant we're having, I think, is, is supposed to be a positive thing of, like, right. we're spreading this positive message that actually yeah. that's not the right way to go in a lot of circumstances, and, and a lot of people in business are going mm. that way. So, And also, as you said, it can be unethical, so that's, that's yeah. something we want and to And I think, again, like, trying to from. sort of balance out the argument here, there are lots of great trainers out there in the world. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to talk through some of the things I think about education and the types of people I think are brilliant at training. Mm. Um, but also, like we've said, there's a lot of bad stuff out there. So hopefully listeners who are listening to this episode, will act this will help you because it will help you avoid the bad ones and mm. sort of... I think yeah. Also, if you're a trainer listening to this now and you know that you're brilliant... Um, it's not aimed at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No need to get defensive. We're in a way we're we're trying to defend what you do. <laughs> yeah, and make sure that only people who are mm. brilliant and know what they're talking about are yeah. being paid to train others. So I wanna I wanna share a bit of a story, Lloyd, just to set this set the scene for. <laughs> Gather round, children. <laughs> it's story time. <laughs> so, if, and I'm not gonna. I can't go into real specifics, but you'll get the idea. So, in the last ten years, we went to. A live event well, it was a few years ago mm -hmm. um and it was a big event abroad and oh a bit more detail can you one of out? the uh you thousands, thousands of people there thousands of people there and one of the uh uh key speakers came to the stage and one of the event organizers sort of told the story of this guy and he was originally a plumber mm -hmm. And he told the story of this heartfelt story. It was quite emotional. You know, and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. He told the story of how for years he'd be trying to be successful as a plumber, um, but never quite could get there. Like, I don't know, he obviously wasn't doing certain things he should have been mm -hmm. doing to really grow the business. So he sort of kept plodding along until one day he decided to join TikTok. And he started to create these videos on TikTok, basically educational videos talking about, here's how you fix your tap. Hmm. And like in creative ways, showing, creating, you know, tapping into trends and stuff. And it was tapping. like, yeah, well done. And um, he absolutely blew up on TikTok, hmm. like got millions and millions of views. And he's started a YouTube channel and across social, he's massive now. Hmm. And he basically um, pivoted his business from being a plumber to creating like a membership site and stuff and to train other people how to be, how a, to plumber. be a plumber. Hmm. And how brilliant is that, Lloyd? Like, he had a failing business as a plumber, and now he's got a hugely successful p business teaching people how to be a plumber when he was a failed plumber. 
Can you see well, what's wrong with that? Well, well, I think that's great because clearly he's he's turned his story around and he's a great success now. Yeah, and then you think about it and you think, wait a minute, he wasn't good at the thing he's teaching people and now he's teaching people how to do the thing that he wasn't successful in. Mm-hmm. And I remember you and I left the, left the room after. They, they were... They were like... Everyone was like, this guy is absolutely amazing. Cheering. Think how he's turned Oh my around. God, oh, yeah. What a story, how successful. And we both guy. sort of left and looked at each other and, and we both sort of said, do you, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Like, mm. what what's going on there? A failed plumber is teaching other thousands of other people how to be a plumber. He couldn't make his business a success. So rather than try to continue to work to make his business a success, he chose to teach people how to make businesses like his a success even though he couldn't do it and this goes back to again like i said at the start of this episode why i think training and i may ruffle a few feathers here training is easier than delivery because he probably knows a lot about plumbing Mm. of course he does because he was did run a plumbing business and he can teach people that stuff but he that he hasn't been successful in it Mm. so how can you how can you teach others when you haven't actually got to where yeah. they want to get to? And I think this is obviously one example, but there's examples in every industry and there's so many online courses, so many popping up, people popping up, teaching various things, various industries, skills, services, how to mm. build this sort of business, how to do that. And I, I just really think it's a big negative and it's taken advantage of people. So just to make this really clear like with this plumbing example mm. think so so one side of it that everyone was hundreds i don't know if it's hundreds it's or thousands thousands, it was thousands, thousands of, of people in this room cheering this guy's done an amazing thing and gone from a failing business to oh. to being so successful teaching mm. other people how to have those failing businesses <laughs> yeah. um so they were they were celebrating that individual success mm. now to make it really clear, think about everyone that's paid him for his courses and how to build a successful plumbing business, mm. even though we've got the evidence he doesn't know how to do that. Mm. Think of the negative effect this guy is having on an entire industry mm. um, of people that are paying him to teach them. And like we're saying, we know he doesn't know mm-hmm. how to do it well. Mm-hmm. They literally said that. <laughs> yeah. So so these thousands of people in a room celebrating this indiv- individual success is actually, oh, it's so good. You've managed to get money from other people because you've persuaded them you, you can do this even though you can't. Yeah. And I think we need to get away from this being a celebrated thing. Mm. Um and it's uh, and it's like oh individually me i've got to sell this course and it doesn't really matter if it's going to be valuable to others or not i think if honestly if you're listening to this and you're training other people how to do something that you've never had success in i think you're unethical and and no, what, no mm, yeah. wait mm. so and, and i'll take it to the education system right so i did business management with marketing at brighton university mm-hmm. had a variety of lecturers who um spoke to us about all this theory to do with business Mm. so and so in 1903 said this thing about business and you should do this and do that but when you actually speak to them and ask them have you ever run a business have you got any of the like i wouldn't dream of giving advice about marketing if we hadn't done it and had success in it but like like even levels of success i'll play devil's advocate here go on then i think um I don't think everything uh, in life you have to have done to have to teach well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, I think there's separate things here. So, for example, um, my biology teacher at school I think was a brilliant biology teacher. I, I think that he just started as a biology teacher. I don't think he was like a doing Biologist. experiments for years. Yeah, I don't even know what that's called. <laughs> um, Scientist. Do you see what I mean? So like he yeah. he studied to a level where he mm. could deliver in a in a grammar school. Mm. <laughs> Pass my Kent test or eleven <laughs> classes. It was cool um, at that level and pass on really mm. valuable information to people. So I I do think it's not you don't always have had to like. Oh, I've had this career for 10 years and then I've taught. But I think it's uh, this whole kind of world online now, and and especially in the business world, uh, where there's this thing of 
it, it really is people thinking that I don't, well I don't know do they think they, well, no. they know everything about it or do they do they know that they don't but they're just well, happy to sell a course well, on it if you think everyone wants instant gratification mm. you know like you know this is why the whole world of like courses and stuff where it's like become a millionaire in five steps mm. and people are buying them because they want the quick easy route but to be successful there's no quick easy route you know there's probably some examples like unicorns of people who have tried one thing and suddenly got hugely successful mm. But to get there, it takes a, a lot of time. And, and I think this is why people are buying into this because it's these people who are training are making it seem easier than it is. Yeah. In whatever it is they're training. And that's where the kind of ethics come into it as well. So because potentially they don't understand how hard it actually is in the challenges because they haven't actually experienced that and they don't know mm. how to do that. They make it sound easier than it is. And also it's the the unethical thing of not only are you making it sound easier but you're kind of acting as if you you've been there and done, done this it and you know this stuff mm. but you haven't i also think a lot of these people aren't bad people like i i, I actually think you know and and i'm not going to give exact examples but we've spoken to people over the years who have moved from running failing businesses to running training businesses and they I don't think they get this side of it, the unethical side. I think it's more like, oh, I could help people by sharing what I know. I and it's sort of like, yes, mm -hmm. you could. Mm -hmm. But if you're positioning that as you're sharing what you know because you've achieved something that you haven't, mm -hmm. it's unethical. I think, I think you're right. I think there's very few nasty people or bad people that are like, oh, I'm just... There are I'm definitely, there definitely are those out there. And yeah. you see them online, the people that are selling the get, tri get rich quick schemes mm. and all this sort of thing. Um, but I think the majority aren't bad people. Mm. They're just thinking, oh, it will be easier for me to sell this course on this thing and put together the course than uh, work hard for mm. nine years and and actually do it. And, and I think like... <sighs> we've we've spoken quite a lot about things like writing a book mm. right you and i we have said that at some point in our life we want to write a book yeah but i e like we've had a small like comparatively a level of success mm -hmm. with the business you know we're doing all right but i still don't feel like i've i could write a book to teach people because we're still making loads agree. of mistakes and trying to figure it out we don't know all the answers mm -hmm. I, we haven't figured it out yet, have I we? I 100% think we could sell a book right now. Mm. I'm not 100% confident that that book will be a brilliant resource for people. Uh, because we, we, don't, we, don't we haven't got enough. Know yeah. what we don't know yet and we need more experience. And I, I, we also had, you know, I suppose it's not just courses. It could be books as well. Mm. A couple of years ago, an awards event <laughs> for business. Yeah. A guy came up to me and was telling us to write a book and saying... I just put one out. I didn't even write it. Just just outsourced got, it. Just outsourced it. Got a ghostwriter. Put my name on it, and ev everyone thinks you're an expert because you've got a book. I think that's that's the kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, you you can make some money in the short term, mm. but if you're going to go down that route of you don't, you, you're just trying to get money out of people, and you don't actually mm. care. So it's if, not the right route so, to go down. Like we said, there are definitely brilliant trainers out there. Need to make that clear. Yeah, there are so many good teachers, trainers. Yeah. So many good courses you can take. Yeah. There, there are brilliant, brilliant. So if people like obviously lots of people want to learn and mm. courses can teach them those things. So if you were going to invest in getting training from someone or like a course or mm. what would what kind of due diligence would you do to check that because some people are really good at marketing themselves and it's difficult to tell if they have actually been there, yeah. done it, got the t shirt, or if they're just brilliant marketers and do you know what? I think this is really hard to do these days. I think previously I would have said, make sure you have a look and check they've got some customer testimonials of people that have been on the course. <laughs> but you can buy days, them. There's, well, well, not only can you do, do that and fake it, but also people can enjoy the course and think that it's been good in the short term yeah. and say how good the course has been. Yeah. And then you only realize three years later, mm. God, that guy I did the course with. Like Now yeah. I've actually learned more about this he had no idea what he's talking like about. you shouldn't if you've just done a course you should never immediately do a testimonial <laughs> on the course because you haven't well, you applied could, what you've learned yet you, you could write a review saying how much you enjoyed it i enjoyed fair the, enough yeah. th that's what we're saying like good skills of a mm. trainer and a teacher can make you really enjoy yeah. the session and that that's that's brilliant mm. and that's part of it 
but you, you shouldn't be saying mm. uh giving reviews saying this had a massive effect on mm. on the business because you or, or you know whatever i do because you haven't spent long enough to know if that was yeah good enough i yet. suppose like again being devil's advocate some people are like good at motivating people to to kick him up the ass to go and do something. So that's less tangible in terms of, I did this course and I achieved this. It's more like, I did this course and now I'm motivated and pumped yeah. up to want it. So I guess there and is there, still is there value. some kind of like membership services and sort of consultancy services in business that really like over half of it is just holding you accountable and you're going to have this uh, sort of expert in inverted commas have a a, a fortnightly call with you and say have you done those actions you said mm. you do and that's that's more kind of coaching you know and it's, it's yeah. pushing you the right direction I think that that can be really valuable mm. for people I also if anyone's listening and you completely disagree with us or completely agree or have something interesting to say please do share like we we share clips from this on social and I, like it's a great place to start I think a conversation the reason we wanted to have this conversation I think we kind of felt no one was talking about it so we understand I think there's going to be a lot of people who disagree because we haven't seen people mm. talking about this online. So I assume it's not a common yeah. feeling or thought. I don't know now where we've said it and people are listening, whether you agree or not. Mm. Or like we said, I mean, we could get backlash like when we said accountants are rubbish once. <laughs> yeah. um, hopefully we don't. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I guess take it, turn it around to that positive. Like what I am trying to get out of this episode is mm. the positive message of, obviously if we all have more ethical businesses, uh, and we care about each other and the business mm. community. That's a positive thing. Mm. Um, but also, like I'm saying, I think in a lot of cases for long-term success, fulfillment, mm. happiness, financial success, I feel, like I said, that striving to be the best at something rather than mm. uh, maybe steering off and mm. going, oh, maybe I could teach this, I think is, is a better option for a lot of people. And mm. people are getting distracted and persuaded to to run courses and things i don't think it's necessarily a good thing we recently did an episode on how to overcome imposter syndrome and self-doubt and it was one of our uh most liked episodes most mm. downloaded episodes what i'm slightly concerned about this episode is what what about the people who are actually in a position where they should be training because they've been there and done it but now because they've listened to this they're now doubting themselves and thinking oh no mm. should or should i be i guess it's we what gives you the right <laughs> not gives you the right what, but what is an ethical well i think nothing gives us the right to judge which people are are good enough to train people all, on which yeah. courses are gonna like but that, this is our podcast so we're allowed to talk yeah about we're it. allowed to talk about <laughs> it but i think that's the thing like we're not in a position to say right that person isn't good enough that yeah. person is we can't make that judgment but i think what we can do is persuade people to uh think about themselves and what they're doing and think actually is this a good thing could i be taking a different route and not doing training and it's better for me and mm. it's better for my customers and we can also for for people that are signing up for these courses i think spread the message of just make do mm. a bit more research and make sure you're really confident in the person training you so that you can get to it if you're gonna mm. sign up for a course because there are some brilliant ones out there mm. you're you're really gonna get a positive outcome from it yeah um i think that's what i want to make people think rather than just i don't want anyone to go online and go yeah everyone doing training courses is mm. shit because they're obviously not i also think it's it's mainly a case of managing expectations so like take us as an example we are now a team of 11 we, we're doing you know we're nowhere near the size of some of some of the biggest marketing agencies out there thousands of people we could potentially train pe marketers who are one-man bands that want to start hiring the first few people because mm. we've been there and done it like and we'd provide a lot of value for a lot of value people. for that mm. um you know the plumber who was a failed plumber maybe he was a failed plumber but it's all kind of subjective mm. maybe he had a few consistent clients mm. and he might want to teach people how to get a few consistent clients yeah. but it's about managing expectations of what you've been there done and got the t-shirt mm. in terms of results and managing that rather than overselling and inflating mm. what you can do we're not going to sell a course on how to scale a marketing agency from five employees to 200 because we've we never done, it. done that yet mm. we might do yeah we haven't done that yet like you're saying we could provide a lot of value to people who are taking the jump from uh being on their own or two or three people mm. to kind of the next level yeah i think that's that's a good point yeah interesting rant i hope this wasn't too ranty 
Um, but I think it was just an important mm. topic we needed to discuss. Be interested to hear any feedback from you anchors because I think it has been a different style of episode. Yeah. And I don't know how well it's going to go down. I'm not sure. Mm. But open to hear from you guys. And do you know what? I might agree with your opinion and I might not, but I will respect it. <laughs> Such a nice guy. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I am. We'll see you next week. See you next week, guys. Stay positive. Next one won't be a rent.